So, if you weren't already aware, Scott Elec is out now. It was finally released yesterday for Amlogic S805 devices. Those of you with different Amlogic products, such as S905 or S912, do not worry too much. I am currently porting to S905 as we speak, and I'm going to begin working on a port for S912 devices in the near future, so stay tuned for any updates or developments on that. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, Scott Elec is retro gaming firmware for Amlogic TV boxes and devices. It incorporates a number of features and tools, such as Emulation Station, RetroArch, a couple of standalone emulators for the likes of Dreamcast and PSP, and it's also got included the Internet Archive ROM launcher by Zach Morris. Now, it's based on Libra Elec, and I should also mention that Scott Elec was forked from source code by a guy called Nayabi. He released a system called SX05RE for the Amlogic S905 chipset, and he's been maintaining that code for a very long time. And without him, none of this would be possible, and he has helped me immensely over the development process of Scott Elec. So without him, none of this would be achievable. So very, very big thank you to Nayabi. I will leave the links to his work in the description, and I very much recommend that you check his work out as well, because he is very talented at what he does. Now, Matthew's already released a setup video showing you how to basically configure Scott Elec to work with the Internet Archive ROM launcher, etc. And he touched upon briefly RetroArch configs, etc. But today I'm going to be looking at RetroArch again and giving a more in-depth look at how to get everything configured and working within Scott Elec and show you some pretty cool features that RetroArch has as well. So my name's Scott and you are watching another video tutorial by the MXQ Project. So I booted up Scott Elec and this screen should look very, very familiar to you. Now I know Matthew touched upon this in his setup video, but one of the first things to do when you first boot up Scott Elec for the first time is to load up RetroArch, which is what we're going to do now. So let's just imagine that this is the first boot. So we go down to add-ons, program add-ons, and we find the RetroArch launcher. So we open up this and RetroArch will launch pretty, pretty quickly. And here we are at the main RetroArch user interface. This will look very, very familiar to you if you've used Lacquer before or Alex Alec or one of our previous MXQ project retro gaming builds or something to that effect. But it should look very, very similar. Now, one of the things that Matthew said to do in his video, and he was absolutely right, is that you need to open up RetroArch first and make sure that you have a config file. Now, the way RetroArch works is that when you first boot it, it launches and it opens a configuration file which is contained in one of the root directories of the file system. Now once you leave RetroArch for the first time it duplicates that file into the config folders within the device's storage which means it's going to be directly editable and we can make changes and things. So when you launch IAL without doing this first it looks for that config file but obviously it doesn't exist if we haven't previously used RetroArch. It's a bit of a caveat but there we go. So easiest way would be to just quit and then that would create the file but i want to go into a bit more detail with this on how to configure things out and i think it's best practice to configure your controller now rather than leaving it to later that way we don't leave anything to chance and it's less likely that things are going to go wrong so one of the first things we need to do is go across to the settings tab just here on the top the two little cogs you can see at the top here we just need to go across to there and we're going to go down to user interface and then we're going to show advanced settings now what this will do is it will open up a whole load more options for us to configure and play with. Now the first thing we're going to do is go back over to the main screen, click configurations, and then click save current configuration. And that's going to save it, you can see at the bottom it's going to save it in storage.config, which means it's now editable. And now whenever we launch RetroArch or anything we launch as a game, it's going to look for that config file. So now what we can do is go and configure our input. So if we go across the settings and then input again, and just enter here, and we can come down and we can select input user one binds. Not hotkey binds as I've just done, sorry. User one binds. Now, as you can see here, mine is set to an air mouse in the user one device index. This will be different to whatever you're using. And I should also mention that if you've got a controller plugged in, it will allow you to use the menus in RetroArch but you may not be able to control any games with it. So we need to make sure that the device index is set to what you're going to be using to play games. Now we can come up here and we can bind our key mappings. Now Muffy showed you how to do this one by one yesterday, but there's an easy option if you go to user one bind all 
it will allow you to one by one map your buttons and you can just go through this and press all the buttons on screen that it says and you can press the corresponding button on the controller that you're using i'm using an xbox controller which i think is probably one of the better controllers to use but you can do all your mapping here and then afterwards if you've got anything wrong or you want to fine tune it or change something you can use these options here which matthew showed you in his video then we can go up to the top and we can save the auto config which means that it's going to save this to our config file and now from now on we can rest assured that our controller is going to be recognized and we're going to be able to use it for games and for navigating the menus another little thing that annoys me on this is the fact that the menu ok and cancel buttons are swapped over when using an xbox controller which means that pressing b acts as ok and a acts as cancel you can swap these over so now the a button acts as ok and b button acts as cancel it's just something that niggles me so that we're going to go ahead and save the configuration again just to make sure that's all saved and that's our input setup So now I'm going to show you a cool little feature within RetroArch which allows you to organize your game folders and all your game files. So I've gone ahead and downloaded a few game files and I'm going to come across to the plus sign on the RetroArch interface. And then we're going to click scan directory. Now what this will do is it will bring up a list of ROM directories which are created on first boot. Now this isn't every system that this Scott Alec firmware can handle. These are just the folders which emulation station will recognize any other roms that emulation station can't categorize we'll just go into the standard rom folder but if we find a folder here let's do for example mega drive and we click the mega drive directory and then click scan this directory it's going to scan all the files contained in there and if we come back out we can now see a little mega drive controller on the end and it's organized all of our ROM files and titles here so we can easily launch them directly. So if we do that again and we choose another system, say the Atari 2600, we'll scan that one, come back out and you can do this for all your ROM folders. So we'll do Game Boy Advance now and we'll just scan it and we'll do N64 as well. Scan that and when we come back out we'll have lists for all these systems. So there we have the Atari titles. I've got some classics there. Cubit's a personal favorite. Game Boy Advance, N64, and of course the Sega Mega Drive. So this is just a neat little way of organizing your games so you're not having to go back and forward between Emulation Station and RetroArch if you're wanting to switch games quickly. Now I would like to take a look at the cores that come bundled with Scott Elec and have a look at the online updater as well. So if we go back to the first option and click load core we get a list of all the cores that are included with RetroArch within Scott Elec. Now most of these I've tested and they do all work but there are some I haven't tested and some that there are some issues with. There's also a lot of duplicates as well as you can see so a lot of cores will emulate the same system for example the SNES and some games work better with some cores so you may need to chop and change cores depending on what works best for you but if we go down to the bottom there will be an option here to download different cores so if we click the download core button and this will pull a list of available cores that we can download and install directly from Libretro so some of these will be duplicates the same of what we already have installed some of these will work again some won't work there's no way for me to test them all so it's up to you guys to try a few out and see what works and what doesn't but we get a lot of cores here that we can download and install so let's try and install DOSBox and it'll download and extract it and then install it and we'll try a couple of others as well just to see if they download let's try the MSX there we go Nintendo DS we'll try both of these probably not going to actually test them on this video but we're just going to see if they install and display on our core list let's try quake and back up to the top and we'll try doom as well i know doom works very very well on the s805 it's available to download as well from internet archive rom launcher to use with this core and if we go back into the load core list you'll see that the ones we've just downloaded have installed successfully and as I say, it's up to you guys to test whether they actually work with games or ROMs. But this is how you download additional cores for Scott Elec, or for RetroArch rather, running on Scott Elec. 
Next up, I want to show you the online updater. So if we come into the main menu and go down to online updater, we have two options, one of which is content downloader. This will allow you to download various games and test files to test out your course. So let's download Doom. Again, this should download and extract into our RetroArch download folder. Come back in, and we'll just have a look through at what kind of things we can get. So we've got a selection of DOS programs here. Wolfenstein, classic. And we get test files for things like the Dreamcast and the PlayStation as well. And there's also a Tomb Raider demo as well, I think, for the PlayStation Core. So you can come in here and download various different files to test out your cores, which is a nice little feature. We've also got a thumbnail updater as well, which in theory should download a zip file containing all the thumbnails for all the different game titles for that corresponding system. So if we go up and we'll try and download some thumbnail artwork, we'll go with the Atari 2600. Now I've not tested this yet, so this could go one of each way. It could work or it could not work, but it should download and extract those thumbnail images. And there'll be a lot of them, because as I say, I think it downloads a zip containing artwork for every game for that system. And that's extracting now. So in theory, we should be able to go over to that playlist we created earlier, the Atari one, and it should now start displaying some artwork alongside the game titles, just to make everything look a bit nicer. Oh, there we go. It's caught up a bit. Yeah, that's worked absolutely fine. So you could download artwork to accompany your playlists as well, and just make everything a little bit prettier. And that is basically the core updater and the online updater and the content downloader. Now, I'm not going to get into this section in too much detail, but there is a netplay capability in Scott Elect. We haven't tested it fully, and we're going to be doing a video on this in the near future, myself and Matthew. But it does have netplay capabilities. So what you can do down here is in the netplay section, you can click Refresh Room List, and that will bring up a, a list of multiplayer sessions that you can join. You obviously have to be using the same core and the same game as whoever's online, and these are public kind of servers. So you can click refresh room list and bring up any available multiplayer servers. You can also connect to a host by entering its IP address. So if you've got a Netplay host set up, one of your friends, they can give you their IP address and you can connect directly. You can also start your own Netplay host. So whatever you're playing, if it's got Netplay enabled and it's multiplayer, you can start your own public Netplay room. And you can have people join by entering your IP address or by finding you on the room list. But again, we're going to do this in a future video. And I think I'm going to leave today's tutorial there for now. I think I've covered the basics of everything you need to know on how to get RetroArch configured for use alongside Scott Elec. I don't want to get too detailed with it or go too in-depth because there are many, many settings and configurations I haven't covered. We'll maybe cover some of those in a different video if there's call for it or if it's wanted by the viewers. But we shall see how we get on with that. But I think for the basics of getting Scott Elect up and running without any problems, we've covered everything we need to cover. And hopefully you've now got a better understanding of how RetroArch works and how to get things set up to work alongside Scott Elect. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. Guys, if you did like it, give me a like. If you didn't like it, give me a dislike. That's fine as well. Also, come and talk to me in the comments if you've got any suggestions or any questions. I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget as well, we've got the website, mxqproject.com. All this information will be up on there. We've also got loads of other video tutorials and reviews. We've got the Twitter account now at mxqproject, so come and give me a follow. I'll leave the link to the Facebook group in the description, so you can come over and talk to us on there. And that is pretty much it. Don't forget that Scott Elect is out now as well at scottelect.mxqproject.com forward slash S805. I'm currently porting for the S905, the S905X, and the S905W. And in the future, the S912 version will hopefully come along nicely as well. So stay tuned for any developments. I've been Scott. You have been watching another video tutorial by the MXQ Project. And I shall see you very, very soon in the next video.